Learning About Diabetes, brought to you by Novo Nordisk. What is diabetes? If you have diabetes, you are not alone. Millions of people today have diabetes. Diabetes cannot yet be cured, but it can be managed. This video will give you some tips to help you manage your diabetes. Diabetes is a condition in which sugar levels in your blood are high. When you eat, some of your food is broken down into sugar, also called glucose. Sugar travels in your blood to all of your body's cells. Why is insulin important? Insulin helps sugar move from your blood into your cells. Insulin is a hormone that is made by beta cells in your pancreas. Cells in your body need sugar for energy. Sugar from food makes your blood sugar levels go up if it cannot get into the cells. Insulin made by beta cells lowers your blood sugar levels by helping sugar move from your blood into your cells. In addition to insulin, there is also another hormone made in the pancreas called glucagon that tells the liver to release stored sugar if your blood sugar gets too low or if you have not eaten for many hours, such as overnight. What other hormones are involved in diabetes? When you eat, another hormone made in the gut helps the pancreas produce the right amount of insulin to move sugar from the blood into the cells. This hormone is called glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1. One of its primary actions is to stimulate the beta cells in the pancreas to produce insulin when the blood sugar is too high. It also helps to lower the amount of sugar made by the liver. What happens in diabetes? The most common types of diabetes are type 1 and type 2. In type 1 diabetes, the body makes little or no insulin so people with type 1 diabetes must take insulin every day. Type 1 diabetes is usually diagnosed more often in children and young adults. In type 2 diabetes, the body prevents the insulin it does make from working right. The body may make some insulin, but not enough. Most people with diabetes, about 90%, have type 2. This kind of diabetes usually happens in people who are older or in those who are overweight. What causes type 1 diabetes? Even though the exact cause is unknown, in type 1 diabetes, cells from the body's immune system attack the insulin-making beta cells of the pancreas. Without symptoms or pain, over a period of months or years, the beta cells are killed. As a result, the body does not have enough insulin. Normally, insulin helps the cells of the body take sugar out of the blood. Cells use the sugar as fuel. Without insulin, sugar builds up in the blood. This can harm blood vessels. It can also cause heart disease, blindness, and kidney failure. To keep these things from happening, people with type 1 diabetes take insulin several times daily. Most people with type 1 diabetes are diagnosed around the age of 12. What causes type 2 diabetes? In type 2 diabetes, the body either does not make enough insulin or is not able to use it properly. Type 2 diabetes usually begins with insulin resistance. This is when the cells can't use insulin properly. As we explained earlier, insulin is a hormone made in the pancreas, a gland near the small intestines. Special cells in the pancreas, called beta cells, make the insulin. The body constantly checks how much sugar is in the bloodstream. When blood sugar levels rise beyond a certain point, the body signals the pancreas to release insulin insulin helps the cells use sugar. The diagnosis of diabetes is given when not enough insulin is available, either because the pancreas can no longer keep up with the demand or because the body can't use the insulin that is produced. Let's take a closer look. Cell walls have little locks called receptors. Insulin fits into those locks like a key. When insulin opens the locks, sugar is allowed to enter the cells. When the body is not able to make enough insulin, blood sugar is locked out of the cells. Sometimes the locks change in shape. Then the insulin can no longer fit into them. Either way, blood sugar is locked out of the cell. It stays in the bloodstream 
and can become too high, causing hyperglycemia, which can lead to the symptoms of diabetes. When cells cannot get sugar, they no longer have the fuel they need. The pancreas tries to make up for this by working harder. At first, the pancreas keeps up by making more insulin. In time, the pancreas is unable to continue doing this, which is when the symptoms of diabetes may appear. As a result of these changes, your physician may discuss starting a diabetes care plan with you. Diabetes care plans can include taking diabetes medicines, eating a carefully planned diet, exercising regularly, controlling blood pressure and cholesterol, and possibly taking aspirin daily. What are the common signs and symptoms of diabetes? With diabetes, you have high blood sugar, also called hyperglycemia. Some common signs and symptoms of diabetes are urinating often, being thirsty more often than usual, being hungry more often than usual, unusual weight loss, tired more often than usual, blurry vision, wounds that won't heal, numb or tingling hands or feet, frequent infections. The symptoms of type 1 diabetes can have a faster onset and be more dramatic, whereas the symptoms of type 2 diabetes can be more difficult to detect. High blood sugar, also called hyperglycemia, can happen if you skip a dose of insulin or diabetes pills, eat more than usual, are less active than usual, are under stress or sick, are taking certain medications. The best way to avoid high blood sugar is to follow your diabetes care plan. Ask your diabetes care team when it is appropriate to call their office with your blood sugar results. What is low blood sugar? You might also get low blood sugar, also called hypoglycemia. Signs and symptoms of low blood sugar can include being hungry, feeling nervous or shaky, sweating, feeling dizzy, being sleepy, feeling confused. Low blood sugar can happen if you take certain medicines, eat too few carbohydrates, skip or delay a meal, take too much insulin or diabetes pills, are more active than usual. Ask your diabetes care team what your blood sugar level should be and when you should check it. If you think you have low blood sugar, check your blood sugar right away. Treat by eating or drinking something high in sugar. The important thing is to get at least 15 to 20 grams of sugars or carbohydrates. Examples of food with 15 grams of carbohydrate include four ounces, one half cup of regular fruit juice, like orange, apple, or grape juice, four ounces, one half cup of regular soda pop, not diet, glucose tablets, two tablespoons of raisins, one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of honey. The American Diabetes Association recommends that you wait 15 minutes and then check your blood sugar again. If it is still low, eat or drink something high in sugar again. Once your blood sugar returns to normal, eat a meal or snack. This can help keep low blood sugar from coming back. Always check with your diabetes care team for instructions on how to best treat low blood sugar. The goal of a diabetes care plan is to keep blood sugar levels within the normal range. What is blood sugar testing and why is it important? Checking your blood sugar yourself is one of the best ways to be sure your diabetes is under control. Checking often will tell you if your insulin or other diabetes medicine is working, how physical activity and the foods you eat affect your blood sugar. You'll usually feel better and have more energy when your blood sugar stays at or near normal. Managing your blood sugar can also reduce your risk of developing problems from diabetes. You can check your own blood sugar using a meter. Many different kinds of blood sugar meters are available today. Your diabetes care team can help you choose one and show you how to use it. You and your diabetes care team will decide when and how often you will check your blood sugar. All meters are slightly different, so always refer to your user's manual for specific instructions. Why is keeping a blood sugar diary important? It's important to write down your blood sugar levels so that you can keep track of what makes them go up or down. 
you can get an idea of how food, activity, and stress affect your blood sugar. Your doctor will tell you when you should write down your blood sugar levels. If you are often out of the desired range, it might be time to change your diabetes care plan. Working with your doctor or diabetes educator will help you to better understand your numbers. What are fasting blood glucose and postprandial glucose? There are two terms you will hear when testing your blood sugar levels, also known as blood glucose levels. One is fasting blood glucose. Fasting blood glucose is your blood sugar level after you have not eaten for 8 to 12 hours, usually overnight. The second term is postprandial glucose, or blood sugar after you have eaten. This is your blood sugar level taken 1 to 2 hours after you have eaten. What is an A1C test? The A1C test measures your estimated average blood sugar level over the past 2 to 3 months. It's like a memory of your blood sugar levels. It shows you how well you're controlling your blood sugar levels over time. Your A1C and your blood sugar levels go up and down together. Lowering your A1C to below 7% reduces your risk of problems from diabetes. Therefore, the A1C goal for most people is less than 7%. It is recommended that you get an A1C test at least two times a year if your blood sugar is under control four times a year, about every three months, if you are not meeting your goals or if your treatment has changed. Your diabetes care should come from a team put together by your doctor. Your diabetes care team may include an eye doctor, nurses, and a dietitian. Depending on what concerns you have, your doctor may send you to other specialists as well, such as a foot doctor, 